There was a preacher called Harry Ironside. You might have heard of Ironside. Now he was in a very crowded restaurant and um, uh, you know, we were sitting alone and uh, there was no seat, so a man said, can I please join you? And so the man, uh, Einstein, said, fine. And he pulled up his chair and he said, Einstein got his food and he bowed his head in prayer. The man looked at him after the prayer and said, have you got a headache? Einstein said, said, no. He said, is the food okay? <laughs> Yes. What's wrong then? Well, the preacher said, I always give thanks when I get my meal. The man said, give thanks to who? I work. It's my money. I bought the food. I don't need to thank anybody for this food. Ein said, Einstein said, well, you remind me of my dog. He doesn't say thank you. He just gulps it down. I trust this morning that we don't do that. We don't think, we don't take anything for granted. The plate of food that's in front of you. Think there are millions of people that go every night without food. But God's blessed us. We've got more than enough to feed the dogs and the birds. He's a faithful God. Many people are not thankful for God, to God for anything. You can see this ingratitude in their lives, in their lack of prayer, in the lack of gratitude towards people in general. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18 reads, Give thanks. In all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So whatever your circumstances are today. It has absolutely no relevance. To us giving thanks to God. In every situation. I know it's not easy to give thanks. When your wallet is empty. It's not easy to give thanks when your refrigerator has got no food. But God's word says, give thanks in all circumstances. Why? Because there's power in giving thanks. There is something so magnetic in giving thanks to God. And when we give thanks to God, we're showing Him our grateful hearts. And no. As people, we'd like to bless people with grateful hearts. And so when we are grateful to Him, He blesses us beyond our understanding. You see, we humans are sometimes not very good when it comes to saying thank you or giving thanks. Uh, somehow we have been brought up with some wrong teachings. And we have these thanksgiving services. And we sing, we, we invite everybody and we tell them we're having a thanksgiving service. Who are you thanking? God. What does God get out of this thanksgiving? Zero. All your friends and relatives come and have a very sumptuous meal. And they all go away happy and you have a great time together. And we say we're giving thanks to God. I can't believe it. Give thanks to God and come and have a good eat together. And what did God get out of this? It's time we changed this. It's time we understood the relevance and the meaning of giving thanks to God. You give thanks to God and cook yourself a good big meal and then you eat it and you say, I'm giving thanks to God. We've done it, haven't we? Time to repent. We need to really give thanks to God. And so brothers and sisters, there are lots and lots of people that we come across here in our mission. And it must not distract us 
from doing what we should not, what we should be doing. Sometimes, ingratitude by people that we help can make us hard, can cause us to close up. Imagine if God closed up on us. We'd be in trouble. So, let's not close up on anybody. Let me give you some stories that I've uh, researched and, uh, and I've come across myself personally. And here's a story written by a lady who worked in the church dealing with needy people. It might sound like Global Mission Center. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, she said a friend and I transported some living room furniture to a local woman who had no income. As we hauled the furniture in out of our out of our pickup truck and set it up in a home, she stood silently watching us. You would think that she would have run down and helped them get it out of the van. No, she stood watching. Eventually, she asked, could you get me a footstool as well? Uh, the way my guests, uh, that way my guests won't put their feet on the coffee table. I don't know if you're following me. Several times in the ensuing months, she phoned me, inquiring about the footstool, which never materialized. One day she called and announced, I need some new furniture. When I asked why, she explained, I moved to a different house. I left the old furniture in that place. It was too old, and besides, the couch had a broken leg. The lady in response wrote, I wanted to scream. Another time a woman telephoned a church in panic saying that she had no food in her home. And so the people at the church quickly got some bags of food together and took it to the house. And accepting the food she asked, can you find me a roll-up bed as well? Well, they did do that and returned a week later, found a bed and watched. The lady stood at a window watching the people, well, watching the one lady single-handedly carrying the bed across the street during rush hour traffic. She waited while the lady assembled it for her and then flatly stated, the food that you brought me last week was poison. I was so sick I almost died. Stunned I asked whether she had perhaps had some stomach ailment, which was going around at that time. She insisted, no, it was that food. Another woman invited to a wedding complained that the church uh, closet didn't have the right type of garment for her to go to a wedding. And so one of the ladies in the church said, come to my home and I'll, I'll try and fix you up with something that I've got. Uh, but she never showed up. Uh, and then when at her request, I took some bags off my clothes as a gift, she handed them back to me. She said, these aren't what I had in mind. That was all thanks I received. Now, brothers and sisters, while we may be appalled by some of these stories of ingratitude, we must realize that all of us are somewhat guilty. Most of us get into a rut and we take people for granted. After a period of time, we cease saying thank you. We not only do this with people, but we go on to do it with God. We take Him and all the blessings that we have for granted. It's almost like we think we deserve all the good things that God dispenses to us. Have you counted your blessings recently? Or have you been counting all your pains and all your hurts and all your sorrows? Have you 
considered all the good things that God has given you? If so, thank Him. How can we not thank Him? Let's live a life of thanking Him. Let it be part of our lifestyle. Getting up in the morning and thanking Him. Before we get to bed, thank Him. When we get our food, thank Him. And whatever way we are being blessed, thank Him. He deserves all the praises and all the glory. We must thank Him. Secondly, David says, we must tell of Him. In verse 1, I will tell of all your wonders. Are we telling of Him? You know, people want to hear. Tomorrow at work, what kind of stories will you relate to the people you work with at lunchtime? David said, I will tell of all your wonders. Luke 9 verses 20 and 21 says, But what about you? Jesus asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, The Christ of God. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone. You see, at this point in Jesus' ministry, he told his disciples not to tell anyone about him or who he was. But he doesn't want us today to hold back. He wants us to tell everybody. There are times when we ought to be silent. And there are times that we must speak up. This is the time for talking up about our God. This is the time that we must share him to everybody. Everybody needs to know who Jesus is. A minister concluded his church service by telling his people about the serious financial troubles that they were going through. While checking the church's storeroom, he discovered that there were some Bibles in fact, many cartons of Bibles that have never been opened and never been sold or distributed. So at his next Sunday morning service, he asked for three volunteers. And he said, please come over if you're willing to sell these Bibles. The proceeds of these Bibles will be able to help us balance our books for this month. And so three people came forward from an entire congregation, Peter, Paul, and Louis, all rushed forward to be volunteers for the task. Now the minister knew Peter and Paul, these two men were salesmen, and so he was very impressed. These salesmen, well, you know, a salesman can sell you anything. Even if you don't need it, you'll buy it when you have a professional salesman. And so he was very thrilled to have both these men. But then, when he looked at Louis, he thought, wow, this guy doesn't even open his mouth. He doesn't even say a word. He stutters. How is he going to sell these Bibles? But anyway, he volunteered. He's right up front. And uh, we've got to just take him on anyway. Not wanting to discourage Louis, the minister decided to let him try. He sent the three of them away with their back seats packed with Bibles. And he asked them to meet him the following Sunday to give him a report. Anxious to find out how successful they were, the minister immediately asked Peter, Well, Peter, tell us, how did it go? How many Bibles did you sell last week? Proudly handing him an envelope, Peter replied, Using my sales prowess, I was able to sell 20 Bibles. Here's $200 towards the church's coffers. Fine job, Peter, the minister said, vigorously shaking his hand. You are indeed a very fine salesman, and the church is indebted to you. Turning to Paul, he said, Paul, tell us how many Bibles did you sell? 
Well, Paul, smiling and sticking his chest out, said, I'm a professional salesman, and I sold 28 Bibles on behalf of the church. Here's my uh, $280. The minister responded, that's absolutely splendid. You truly are a professional salesman, and the church is really indebted to you. Very apprehensively, the minister turned to Louis and said, And Louis, did you manage to sell any Bibles? 